In this section, we're going to discuss how to evaluate the appearance of the optical disc. So we'll use this picture as an example. And if we were examining this optic nerve and describing it, there would be certain things that we would be expected um, to address in our description. I first want to point out anatomically that the optic disc can be considered to have a rim that surrounds a cup. The rim is where the actual neural tissue is. The cup is sclera that sits within the neural tissue. Here I'm just showing you a depiction of the optic nerve in a side view, a sagittal view, where we uh, have the rim um, with a cup in the middle. And just to illustrate why really we do think of it as a cup with a depression in it. So that when I'm uh, explaining to patients the shape of the optic nerve, I'll often describe it as a bagel um, with a rim uh, surrounding a depression. That's the cup. I'll just digress for a second and point out, I hope it makes sense, but if we have a situation where the optic nerve is being progressively damaged and the neural tissue is being lost, then what will occur is that the rim itself will become thinner and thinner and leave a progressively larger and larger cup in the middle. And the classic example of this would be glaucoma. So when we're looking at the optic nerve, first thing to ask ourselves is, do we see clear borders of the rim itself? And in the case of this picture, while the resolution isn't great, I think we can see fairly clear borders. The next question to ask ourselves is the cup size in the middle. Um, how large is the size of the cup compared to the actual size of the optic nerve itself? And the way that we typically make this measurement is considering the vertical dimensions. Let's do that here. So if this is our measurement of the vertical length of the entire optic nerve, we can also draw out the length of the cup itself and compare the two. And in this case, as we'll soon see, this is a situation where the cup disc ratio would be about 0.5. The length of the, the vertical length of the cup is half the length of the uh, entire optic nerve. Just to illustrate that, if, for those of you who are maybe having difficulty buying into this, if I duplicate my line here and then I move it accordingly, we see that the line that we drew for the size of the cup works out to half the size of the optic nerve itself, it's the radius. Uh, so that in this case, um, for ease, I chose a cup disc ratio of 0 0.5. I'll just point out that in a normal population, uh, the, the average would be uh, smaller, probably about 0 0.03, a third, where the cup is, accounts for about a third of the uh, diameter of the whole optic disc. Okay, so we address whether we see clear borders, what the cup size is, and then the next thing to consider is what's the color of the actual rim itself? Is it a healthy pinkish or orangish, orangish color, um, or do we see a more yellowish, whitish color, which would suggest that there's a disease that's been present in the uh, neural tissue? For the medical student looking at a picture like this, we really can't address the fact of elevation. We can maybe make presumptions sometimes based upon the way that the vessels are moving over the optic nerve. For example, in this case, we have a vessel coming in and then we see that it kind of arcs over here. And this gives the impression that the rim is raised here. Um, for the ophthalmologist who's looking at the optic nerve through a slit lamp or an indirect um, there we actually have a three-dimensional view where we can truly see the optic nerve's degree of elevation. Another feature that we've alluded to already is looking at the vessels themselves, which can sometimes give us clues as to what's going on. It's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're talking about right now. 
and then looking for features that you shouldn't see in a normal situation, such as hemorrhages and various forms of exudates. So here's an example, and I hope that you initial reaction here is that this is clearly abnormal, but rather than just saying it's abnormal, we have to think about how we assess the various features that we spoke about. And we'll just go through them here. So are there clear borders between the optic nerve and the retina? Certainly not. The cup size. Um, do we see a cup here? Well, there might be something maybe in the middle here, but there's, I would say, no discernible cup here. What's the rim color? Is it pinkish, orangish? Certainly not. It's uh, more of a whitish color, which suggests that it's sick. Um, elevation. So here it's again difficult in this two dimensional picture to make the assertion. But if we were looking through a slit lamp, I'm fairly confident that this optic nerve would have marked elevation. The vessels themselves, we said, can sometimes be helpful. And one of the features that we would notice here is the blurring of the vessels. So, for example, as this blood vessel comes in and moves into the optic nerve, it becomes blurred out. And we see other examples of that as well here. And certainly here, very markedly, as this vessel comes in, we just kind of lose it. And this is, uh, I'll just digress again to say that this is a very confirmatory sign the optic nerve is truly swollen. Hemorrhages, so this reddish color that we're seeing out here is hemorrhage. It's not a vessel that's going anywhere. You can see there's, a, there's no path that it continuously takes. This also would be a hemorrhage, and so would this area over here. Um, and sometimes it's a little difficult to tell with situations like this. Um, so there are times where even the ophthalmologist is, can be a little uncertain whether what they're seeing is a vessel or a hemorrhage. But in any case, we see clear examples of hemorrhage in this picture. And exudates. So it's possible, for example, that this uh, lesion over here um, is a form of exudates. And again, we won't get into the details of that right now. But that's a certain example of something that's there that shouldn't be there. So this is clearly an abnormal optic nerve. So coming back to the picture that we initially started off with, I'll ask the question, does this patient have an optic neuropathy? And we'll just forgive the fact that the optic disc cup to disc ratio we say is a little large at 0.5, which can certainly still be normal. But let's assume that that's not an issue. Does this patient have an optic neuropathy? So the mistake would be to say that they don't have an optic neuropathy. The truth is we don't know. There's no evidence here that suggests that that's the case, but they certainly can have an optic neuropathy. And if this patient came into the clinic and said that they were losing vision in their eye, um, I would not at all tell them that they don't have an optic neuropathy just because the optic nerve looked normal. Why is that? Well, it's important for us to remember that when we're looking at the optic nerve through the eye, we're only seeing the very, very front surface of the optic nerve, um, which is a small minority of the extent of the optic nerve itself as it goes back uh, to the brain. So it's true that if we have inflammation occurring right at that site there, at the front edge of the optic nerve, we'll certainly see an abnormal optic nerve. But if we have inflammation occurring further back, then the optic nerve itself that we see will look perfectly normal and we can be easily fooled. So how in this case would we have known that the patient had an optic neuropathy? They should have an RAPD. They will likely have de deficiencies in their color vision um, and a peripheral visual field defect. Okay, so that's the end of this lecture. I hope it helps to give you a approach to addressing the features of an optic disc.